Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another Hula Saturday. This is our Ohana Hula class. Um, we are Halau Napua Hala Kuno Ikekai. If you didn't get the memo, we got mem we got logos all over today. <laughs> this is an old teacher t-shirt that we did all the way back when we first started the Halau. But um, Halau Napua Hala Kuno Ikekai. Uh, we're happy to be coming to you from, we just showed you a shot of very rainy, rainy Nu'uanu. Uh, luckily, we've actually been doing okay, even with all of the rain. Lots of flash flood warnings, but so far, uh, haven't lost power, knock on wood, and cross our fingers. But uh, hope that you're doing okay wherever you are, joining us from all over the world. My name is Kumu Kanoi. And I am the Kumuhula of Halau Napua Hala Kuno Ikekai. This is my son. This is Eames Kalaniakea Williams. And he is my assistant, my kokua, my everything on, uh, on screen. And behind the camera, our producer, man extraordinaire, is um, Eames' daddy, my hubby, Uncle Luke. So we're so happy to be with you here today in the second week of the month. I was going to say February, but what month is it? It is March. Absolutely, it's March. We are celebrating our Prince Jonah Kuhio because he's going to have his big day, uh, Kuhio Day, later on this month, on March 26th. So we have been celebrating him. Uh, so we'll give you a little bit more information about that. But right now, what do you think? It's time. <laughs> Welcome back. We are going to jump right into our hula. On Saturdays, we try to go through sort of the protocol of um, what a normal hula class would look like for our ohana that are tuning in from all over. So we're going to start with Hawaii Pono'i, which of course is our state anthem now, what was originally uh, our national anthem, which was written as a collaboration between King David Kalakaua and Henry Berger. So we're going to do all three verses, starting with verse one right down here. Then we'll go to the hui, the hui on the side. And then verse two, hui, verse three. Okay, so in hula, we always remind you to stand tall. And in Hawaiian, we have a term for that. It's pali ke kua. Your back is straight like a cliff. Mahina kealo, your face ding, shines like the moon. Yes. <laughs> okay, two hands down by your sides. Standing tall. Hawaii i pono i pa. Hawaii i pono i na na i kongo i kala ni a li i ke a li i ma ku a la ni e ka mi.
Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> so that was our Hawaii Ponohi. Next up, we always like to do our Oli Aloha. And before we do our Oli Aloha, we want to know who we're saying Aloha to. Of course, the Oli Aloha was written by Kumu Pilahi Paki, and it is an acrostic poem. It spells out Aloha. If you follow the letters down the first uh, word of each line, you're going to see A-L-O-H-A. But before we dive into our Oli, let's see who is joining us today. Uh, we have, we're so lucky to have so many of you joining us from all around the world. So I'm going to give some shout outs to those of you who have checked in already. If you haven't checked in, now's the time. Okay, so we have oh, Angelique schmidt Temblor. She's joining us all the way from Germany. Telemania. It's, it just blows my mind. I can't wait to go to Germany because we have so many new friends there. So Aloha Noe Angelique. Rai Moana joining us from Palani, from France. Bonjour. Bonjour. I don't know what to tell you to eat for me, but I'm sure there's some delicious pastry, like a baguette or a croissant. Can you have a croissant for Kumu? Okay. <laughs> uh, Mama Chan in Makiki. Mama Chan, how's your eye? Are you doing okay? I know, I know she was recovering, so I hope you're doing okay. And if not, I hope we look good with only one eye open. Okay. Linda is joining us from Pennsylvania. Aloha no. Aloha no. Leslie joining us from Florida on the other side of the continent. Well, we're not on this continent, but you know, you're far away. Okay. And I see Jen, uh, who is tuning in with Bella from Connecticut. Aloha, Bella. Very good. Carolyn is joining us from Washington State. Very nice. We love Washington. It's been Quite a few years since we've visited Washington State. Patricia joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. And of course, Christina joining us from California. Hope you're having some nice weather there. You folks have been hard, hard hit. Oh, I'm glad to hear Mama Chun is all good. She can see us with two eyes open. We better look good. Okay, so now that we know who is joining us, um, if you didn't get a chance, to give us a shout out, please don't feel don't feel like you've missed your chance. We love getting comments from all around the world. So thanks for checking in. All right, so this aloha goes out to all of you um, all around the world. This is our oli aloha. We're gonna do the long form of oli aloha. For this one, we always look from one side of the room across to the other to make sure that we don't miss anyone. Share the aloha with everyone, okay? Oli aloha. Akahai na Hawaii, loka hia kulike, olu olu kamana o, ha a ha a kokulana, a honuya lana kila, aloha. Very good. Tell you a funny story. We look across the room for each one of these, and when I look to this point right here, is ha a ha a kokulana. We look right at my hubby Luke, who's behind the camera, and he is the most ha a ha a guy that I know. Isn't he very humble? You know, he is not a um, movie producer by trade. He's an architect, but I just think he's doing a fabulous job. And so, if you want to give him some love in the comments, give a shout out to uh, Luke. Thanks, babe, for making us look so good. Now I'm going to jinx it. We're probably going to mess up. So, <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to noho ilalo. Go ahead and have a seat. And we're going to go into our prayers. You, can, you could stand or sit. You're still in the camera. So our prayers that we do, um, we usually start with ho'onani, which, of course, is the Hawaiian doxology. You want to come this way so that you don't fall into the abyss? Okay, so... Ho'onani, or the Hawaiian doxology, was um, written, translated by uh, Hiram Bingham. And then uh, a second verse was written by Haunani Bernardino. So we will do both today. Ready? Ho'onani ka. Ho'onani ka makua ma. Oh, my God. 
Hawaiian doxology. After that, we usually go into our Ekeakua. I think, is that what's next? Yes. <laughs> Ekeakua is a, a, also a prayer, a little bit simpler, and we'll do it in call and response form. So I will be the <coughs> mea ala ka'i, I'll be the leader, and Eames will be the mea ho'opili. He will be following after. So you can choose to be either, but um, you would only do one of these, okay? Versus both. Ekeakua. Eke akua, eke akua, mahalo no, mahalo no, mahalo ya oi, mahalo ya oi, no ke ala, no ke ala, amen, 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 amen. Very nice. And this chant says, Dear Lord, thank you, thank you for this day. Amen. Yes? In the song, mm -hmm. there's two amens. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah. There is a repeat of the amen, eh? even though we didn't put it on the screen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. So, no ke yala, what do you, <laughs> no ke yala um, says for this day. And so, before we move on to our next prayers and chants, we want to ask you, how is the day where you are? And the way that we ask that is, <laughs> pehea ke anila. Pehea ke anila means how's the weather? And um, we just, our weather just kind of went from, yeah, to, and we have a shot of it out there. So here in Nu'uanu Valley, <laughs> what would you call that? Pehea keanila ikeyela. How's the weather here right now? Hela ua keia, for sure. Very cold. And hela o malu malu keia, it's very, very cloudy. But check that out. Do you see something? <gasps> There's a rainbow. There is a rainbow, and you can actually see it on the camera. So, hela anu enue keia. Even though there is rain and there are clouds, check out that rainbow right over there. That's for you folks. So, even when it's rainy and stormy, there's a rainbow there for you. Okay, so we wanted to make sure to share that. Pehea kianila, where you are. How's the weather in your neck of the woods? We'd love to know. Hopefully, nothing too uh, catastrophic going on. Okay, so let's let's... Try to bring the sun back out, okay? So we're going to move on to Eala E. Eala E is a song to help us rise up the sun. It is by Puolani Kanahele Kanaka Ole of the Kanaka Ole family. And uh, we always do it three times. And uh, there's a little pattern of clapping two times and then clasping the hands together. You're going to um, repeat that pattern over and over. So I'm going to ask Eames if he can set the beat for us, and we'll go through the first time. Here we go. Join us. Eala e, here we go. Eala e, kala i kahikina, i kamoana, kamoana honu, pi i kaleva, kaleva nuu, i kahikina, aya kala. Stop right there. This next time we're going to do it with some hand motions. Not that we would ever dance this as a hula, but I think it's important to get it into your body, the meaning of this song. So it starts off with your hands by your mouth because eala e means to wake up. Okay, so let's try with hand motions. Ready, go. Eala e, the sun. Kalaika hiki na in the east. 
i kamoana in the ocean kamoana ho ho no deep ocean p e kaleva climb up kaleva nu u highest heavens i kahiki na in the east aya kala there's the sun wake up e ala e very good okay let's go back to just clapping yes so What's the difference between a clap and a clap? Oh, he was asking what is the difference between a clap and a clasp. And I actually learned this when I was learning the Samoan Sasa, which is a clap dance um, that they, they do. And so I was told clap is when you kind of just touch the hands together and it's almost like in a prayer motion. This is clap. Yep. And then clasp is going to be closed like this. And they have words for that in, in Samoan, but I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just going to say clap and clasp. So clasp is like a little bit tighter and it has a different sound. Do you hear it? I don't know if you can hear it on the thing, but it's kind of more high pitch and a little bit lower. Okay, so let's do it. Ready? Last time. Here's the pa'i. Joining in. E ala e last time. E ala e kala i kahikina i kamuana kamuana ho ho nu pi i kaleva kaleva nu u i kahikina aya kala e ala e very good hey maybe we should get someone to come and teach us a sasa on hula that was fast wouldn't that be awesome I love learning the sasa. Okay, anyways, okay, <laughs> I'm, I cannot teach it. I probably messed that up too. All my Samoan followers just dropped off. Okay, anyway. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We are going to go on now to, dun, 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 help me out. Eho mai? Eho mai. Eho mai helps us to focus since we kind of went off the rails there. Eho mai says, grant us the knowledge from above concerning the hidden wisdom of songs or mele grant 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 us these things eho mai pa eho mai ka ike mai luna mai e o na me a huna no e o na mele eho mai eho mai eho mai e for that all right i think it is time now for us to grab our ipu and we're just going to do a little do i have ipu i forgot if i did ipu i did right yes yes okay so the ipu remember is the hollowed out gourd it is a cousin to the pumpkin kabocha squash maybe um and i teach the ipu all the way from keiki because i really believe that it helps the dancers to be able to understand the beat. So, yes, sir. So, could you use a pumpkin for an ipu? He was asking if you could use a pumpkin for an ipu, and I have never tried it. <laughs> and judging from what happens to the jack o' lantern one week after Halloween, I would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it's a, maybe a distant cousin. Maybe not first cousins, it's like sixth cousin, twice <laughs> removed or something. I don't know. Anyways, I was always told it was a relative of the pumpkin, but now that you say it, maybe it's not that close of a relative. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start by making our ipu. This, this mele was taught to me at Ho'omaka Ikai Explorations at Kamehameha Schools. I can vividly remember Hailama Farden singing this song. Okay, ready? Mele, ipu, heke, ole. Let's chop off its head. Pop. Hanavau, ikai, ipu, heke, ole. Scoop out. 
イカイポヘケオレサンデーハンナワオイカイポヘケオレデピンのオシェンイカパパハンナのエオハナホハンナワオイカイポヘケオレイカイポヘケオレハンナワオイカイポヘケオレイカパパハンナのエアオレッツザパービーシングルビーそういうことウーアンナテーダッサウーテーウーテーナレゴカヘラダブルウーテーテーウーテーテーウーテーテーウーテーテーナウトゥザトリプルビークー
that's the direction that you should go. To the right. And cut or sway the hips. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Call hollow, back to the step. Right together, right, tap. Left together, left. Very good. Right together, right, tap. Back to cut or sway. Right, left, right, left. Now, the next step that I want him to demonstrate for you is called the kaholo, what did we say? Kuvili. Kuvili means to spin around. So when he spins, he's not going to spin on one foot. He's actually going to take all the steps. So can you try that again so that they can see it? Okay, can you show them what they shouldn't do? This is the most fun part. Your spin should not look like this. Yes, see how he kind of lost his balance? He wants to take every single step. So he's going to take it very slow motion for just a split. Oh, that's good. Okay. So he's going to take his first step. Right foot is stepping to the side. Then his left foot's going to cross over. Then the right foot's going to come around the back. And then feet together to come back to the front. Then we won't do the, the other turn. Yeah, we'll just do one turn. Okay. So go on that side. So after he does the turn, he's going to kaholo back towards the left. Okay. So let's do it together. Ready? Step the right foot up. Now the left foot crosses, crosses, crosses. Then the right foot comes around the back. Feet to come together. And then you're gonna call holo to the left. Ready, go. Okay, so let's do it all in time. Okay, ready? You know what? My better judgment says we better start with a regular kaholo right and left and then spin. And then regular holo left. Got it? Bend your knees down. Regular kaholo straight to the side, right together, right tap, get ready to spin, go, and call holo left, regular holo right, and left, now spin, and back to the left, and cool, very good, I'm going to ask Ines to step right up here, and maybe we can do the overhead camera, so that you can see what that turn looks like overhead, since we have that beautiful view, thank you so much to uh, daddy. Okay, so let's try that that one more time now that you can see overhead. Okay? okay. Same thing. Bend your knees. Regular kaholo. Right. And left. Fully. Spin. Holo left. One more time. Holo right. Holo left. Fully. Spin. And back to the left. And very good. Okay, give us a thumbs up or a heart if that worked for you. So that is most of the steps that we're going to need for this hula. You got the ka'o, you got the ka'holo, you got the kuvili. Are you tired? <laughs> Give me a high five. Okay, you go sit over there while I review verse number one. Okay. <laughs> Didn't he do a great job? Now that he's eight, I can make him work real hard. Okay. So... Um, let me give you a little bit background about our hula we're going to jump into now. So we have been talking about Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniano Ole. I wanted you to see a picture of the statue that he um, that honors him in Waikiki. It looks like a rainy day in Waikiki uh, for this statue, um, but this is not a live view. That would be awesome if we had a live camera on Prince Jonah. Um, but this is the statue of him in Waikiki. Uh, he is, of course, um, well known for his many feats, including um, helping to start the Hawaiian Civic Clubs as well as the Hawaiian Homelands. For our Saturday classes, we have actually been honoring, <laughs> honoring his home. You can come and watch. That's fine. Um, we have been honoring his home in Waikiki. His estate in Waikiki was called Pua Leilani, um, and so. That statue is not too far from where the home originally stood. Unfortunately, the home is no longer there, but that is Prince Jonah Kuhio. So I'm going to review the first verse, and then I'm going to give you a little bit more information about the rest of the verses. Here's Waikiki Hula. Um, interestingly enough, although this is known to have been written for Pualeilani, the word Pualeilani doesn't appear anywhere in this melee. But we know that it was written for the home um, because who preserved this melee and passed it down from generation to generation. That was Helen Ayat who did that. So anyways, Waikiki Hula, we started this last week. I'm going to break it down a little bit 
more today, um, and then we'll go on to the second verse. All right? So uh, this vamp, or this um, the sort of break in between the verses and at the beginning is going to be your right hand is going to be locked into your waist. Your left hand is going to draw from the side to the front, and then you're going to switch from the side and to the front. We're just going to kaholo in opposition away from our hands. So that four steps to the right, follow your hand. Ready, here we go. Kaholo to the right and kaholo to the left. Very good. Try and get in the habit of moving your head right now because if you just stare at the camera, stare at the computer, you're not going to add it back in later. So let's go ahead one more time. Hands on, uh, right hand on your waist, left hand out to the side. Look at it. Ready, kaholo, ba da 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 now, this hand that's out in front of you is going to draw into your chest, and you're going to give your aloha, hey, aloha, and then other hand, ia, no, that's it. And just to be um, clear, actually, let's go from your chest about to 45 degree angle to the um, diagonal here, and then from your chest out to the other angle, okay? So it says, beloved is, hey, aloha, ia, no. Waikiki. Waikiki, of course, is the spouting water. You're going to do two tiny waves to the right and two tiny little waves to the left. Okay? So, um, from, from the hands, hey, aloha. From your chest, hey, aloha, ia, no. A waikiki, ea. Okay? Now, let's add the feet to that. We're going to kaholo for all of this. For now, okay, there's actually a spin coming, but let's just kaholo. Ready to the right. He aloha, ia no. A waikiki, ea. Okay, now the only part that's going to be the spin is the very first he aloha. So for that he aloha, you're going to turn to the right. He aloha. And then kaholo. Ia no. A all right, so let's add it all the way from the back. Ready and jump. Da 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 Huli. Hey, aloha, ia no. A o wai ki ki ea. Okay, so beloved is Waikiki, this place at Waikiki. Okay, all, uh, sorry. What is the word? Hey all no, I'm Kanehe. Sorry, I was Hey all is the next one. Kanehe he kai the rift of the rustling of the whispering sea. Whispering the whispering the Okay, so you're gonna go push from your lips like you're going shh. Kanehe o he other side kai and then you're gonna pull it back in. Havana and push it back out. Vana. Okay, not vana, like growing in the ocean, not the sea urchin, but ha vana vana is the whisper, the whisper of the sea. So from your lips, kanehe o ke kai, pull it back. Ha vana vana. And then you're going to vamp. Ba da bi da bi da. Just the hands one more time. Hail aloha from your heart. He aloha, ia no, a wai ki ki ea, the whispering. Kanehe o ke kai, havana, havana, and then you vamp, and then you vamp. So let's add the feet to that. Remember, we're going to start with a, a spin right after the vamp. Okay, ready? Follow hands to the side and front, and get ready to spin. Hey, aloha. Hey, aloha. Ia no. A o wai ki ki e ya. Kaholo. Kanehe o ke kai. One ka o. Ha va na va na. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that ka o right there. You got it? He aloha spin. He aloha i ya no. A o wai ki ki e ya. Kanehe o ke kai ka o here. Havana kaholo to the left and side and front and the side and front. So that one extra ka o 
I love this song. It just has that little extra swing to it before you continue. So after you do your whisper, whisper to the right, whisper to the left, and then you're going to rewind it, and then you're going to whisper to the left again. Okay? It's like reverse that. Play it back. Okay. So let's try, um, actually, before we try with the music, it's a lot of music. So let's try it without the music. Okay? Ready and hula da 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 Keala, no, well, wrong words. Hava, nava, because that's why we need a record. Okay, let's play it. Got any? Let's go. Oh. You hear it? I gotta put it on the side. One more time. Thanks, Rhea. Please play. <laughs> All right, I know the people really want to see the star of the show. Come join me. Let's do one more time first, first. Hey, aloha. Here we go. Hey, aloha, spin. Other side. Waikiki. Okay, so that was our first verse of Waikiki Hula. So now I want to tell you a little bit about the second verse, and Eames hasn't seen these slides too, so I want to teach him too. The second verse says, Paiho kamakani lave ma liea. So it's talking about a wind, and we just had a nice gust of wind outside because we invoked the wind. So the wind blows, and it carries with it softly a smell. Smell <laughs> the fragrance of the lipoa seaweed. So let me tell you a little bit more about Kuhio and how he is tied with this seaweed. What does a prince have to do with seaweed? So let's check out this next photo of um, Prince Kuhio when he was in school. Okay, so now, okay, I don't have absolute verification that this is Kuhio, but yesterday on a talk, by Dr. Kalani Akana, he kind of guessed, or he said, maybe this guy right here, right here, could be Prince Jonah Kuhio. He, in this picture, is sitting on the steps at Oahu College, which is now known as Punahou School, and this is him, maybe, says Dr. Kalani Akana, which I trust him. I trust him. I'm just going to go with it. So Prince Kuhio attended Oahu College here on the island of Oahu, which is now known as Punahou School. And this is a picture of their football team. So um, this is on the steps right underneath that big dome, the blue and yellow dome, yeah? So this is uh, a picture of, of back then. After he attended Oahu College, he went with his brothers off to college on the mainland. So here's this next picture. is a picture of the three brothers 
at St. Matthew's College in San Mateo, California. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, great, fine, whatever. Hawaiian royalty were often sent to the mainland to be educated. But it was they who provided an education in many ways to the people of San Mateo because when they were in college at San Mateo, they went to a local mill shop where they had wood, woodworking, and they asked the, the person at the mill to make them some surfboards because they missed going surfing so much. So they took some redwood and they had them make the redwood into surfboards. And there at San Mateo, they brought surfing for the first time to that community. So if you go to San Mateo, there's actually a plaque that is dedicated to them. Am I saying the wrong thing? Okay, sorry. <laughs> so it says, surfing was first brought here by Hawaiian princes. So you see the resemblance maybe between the, the photo that you saw just now and then the plaque. So those three princes are mentioned by name on this plaque. And I have to come closer so I can read. But it says, during the summer of 1885, three young Hawaiian princes rode the waves at the mouth of the San Lorenzo River on redwood planks they ordered, cut in the shape of Olo surfboards by the local timber mill. And so there is a plaque there. Um, I mean, it hasn't been there forever. I think it was put up in 2010, so it's about 11 years old, the plaque, but goes all the way back to 1885 when these three Hawaiian royalty were at California and introduced them to surfing. So I thought that was pretty cool. So um, now, why do I talk about surfing when we're supposed to be talking about seaweed? Well, let's come on back to the island of Oahu. And this is a picture of what Waikiki Beach would have looked like around that same time. Um, and you see there that there are some private homes right there on Waikiki Beach, these were actually private cottages of um, Queen Liliuoka, I'm sorry, Queen Kapi'olani, um, who was the adopted mother, and, and Queen Liliuokalani. They're on the beach at Waikiki, and you see the surfers right there. Can you imagine having your private home right on Waikiki Beach with Diamond Head in the background? So the surfers at Waikiki and all of the locals of Waikiki knew everything about those waters. They knew where the good surf breaks were. They knew when the, when the waves were coming in. They knew the tides and all of that sort of thing. And the prince, Puhio, he loved to surf there. But if he were truly a kupoka aina, if he was truly a local of that land, he would know that oftentimes that beach area would be overrun by something called limu. So I'm going to show you here. This is a little scientific sketch of something called limu lipoa. There's actually two different types of limu lipoa that are recorded. Um, there's one with a slightly more like feathery looking, uh, very thin leaf limu, and then one is a little bit thicker. They grow, um, in ancient times, they grew there at Waikiki. Unfortunately, because of all of the sea, uh, sorry, the sunscreen and chemicals that we put into the ocean, um, there isn't quite as much of it, um, but maybe since we haven't had as much tourists lately, uh, <laughs> it might be coming back, but, um, Anyways, it's sort of a brownish, reddish color, which is why I chose to wear this, this today because it's sort of like this almost brownish, reddish color, limu, and um, it is very well known because, for one thing, it has a very strong smell. You can smell it from far inland in the ocean, and you can just smell it from underneath the water, maybe three feet to 60 feet deep this limu grows, and when it is in full bloom, you can actually smell it from outside of the water. Um, but this limu is well known because after it is picked, heavily salted, and then it can preserve, be preserved, still good to eat, almost indefinitely. It's like, it's good forever. You don't even have to refrigerate it, but you may refrigerate it. You know what they like to put this on? Your, <laughs> yeah, on poke. Yeah, so they would put this limu lipo on poke. So I actually have memories as a child of being down at the ocean and getting all kinds of limu stuck in my hair because there was just so much of it. Um, actually, when the limu um, lifespan finishes, it releases from the rocks and just all kind of comes in to the shore. 
that limu is not as good for eating because it's kind of dying, actually, once it comes into the shore. But I have memories of getting all this limu in my hair and being like, oh, this is so gross. So I'm sure that if Prince Kuhio frequented Waikiki Beach for surfing, he would be intimately aware of this limu lipoa. So all of that to say, when we hear limu lipoa mentioned for Waikiki, it's kind of a reminder that you know, there was a lot of life and thriving Hawaiian culture down there at Waikiki, even before uh, all of the tourists came in. And, and perhaps we can bring it back again. So this is verse number two. Let's learn it. Okay, so this verse says, Paiho kamakani, the wind blows. So put your left hand out to the angle. Your right hand is going to swing over the head with the palm down. And then you're going to go out to the opposite angle. Reverse that left hand over the ha head. That's it. So this is going to be pa i ho kamakani. Then two hands are going to kind of carry on that wind something, the fragrance. So the, the um, placement for this, this is above the head, above the head, and above the head. Then this one is going to go from above the head to about eye level. And then eye level to shoulder level. Okay? Then the fragrance, the smell of this, lipoa. Now, you see how this is different from the last verse? Palm is facing down. It's going to just sort of waft my knee. It's going to go past your nose. Then the other hand. <coughs> Sorry. I'm not a big limu fan, if you can't tell. Okay, so try not to make a face. Okay, ala o na o na. Then oka lipoa, you're going to... Um, you're going to bring your hands. Now, the lipoa is not a flower, so we don't want to point our fingertips up this way. Let me come a little closer to the camera. We don't want it to be this way, but we want to let it lay down in our hands. Like, we're just picking it up out of the water, and it, just imagine it dripping down, smelly. Okay, anyways. Okay. <laughs> so, let's try. Ready? Here's the wind. Ready? Fragrance. Ke ala o na o na o kali poa. Okay, and then we're gonna vamp. Ba di da bi da bi da bi da. Pa i ho blows the wind. Pa i ho kamakani ala vi ma li e e a fragrance. Ke ala o na o na pick the seaweed o kali poa. Okay, so here's the timing on that. And the feet. We're gonna kaholo to the right. Ready? Going this this away. Pa i ho kamakani. I had to get my engine start. La ve ma li e e ya. All kaholo. Super simple. Ke ala o na o na o kali po wa. So you're gonna do one kao at the very end, and that's when you get to pick it up. So you're going to take your time to survey and scoop it all up. And then on the ka'o, you flip it over. Okay, let's get rid of the words so you can see our hand movements really well and our kaholo. Okay, ready? Here we kaholo to the side and front. Follow your hand. Side. Pa'iho. Pa'iho. Wind. Kamakani. Carrying with it. Lave ma'ali. A fragrant smell. Ke ala o na o na. Scoop it up. O kali po wa ka o. Bam pi dam pi dam pi dam. Lock the other hand into your waist. Pa i ho. Pa i ho. Little faster. Come a kani. La ve ma a li e a fragrant smell. Ke ala o na o na. O kali po wa. And. Okay. Um, one thing on the keala lipoa, when you do this motion, you have to give it a good sniff. Yeah, kilo wifa. You gotta smell because it changes your body. When you don't smell, you go like this, and you go like this. When you do smell, watch this part of my body. You see, there's like a expansion, so it makes the viewer want to take that same 
And maybe they'll smell, if you're telling the story correctly, maybe they'll smell that smell of the lipo. Or maybe they'll smell something else. But at least they'll be living, okay? Living through your hula. Live a little, people. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, so here we go. This is the second verse, Paiho Kamakani. I'm going to warn you. The version of this mele that I took it from was Kahawanu Lake. Uh, this is my own recording of it. Kahawanu Lake's version does first verse two times. Thank you very much. Second verse only one time. No, thank you very much, but that's how the recording goes. So we only get to do it one time. Get it right or pay the price. Okay, ready? You're ready to bounce. Follow your hands. That's about. Win. Gently bringing with it. Right ribs. Now, my only tip to you is when you're doing your fragrance, make sure that you don't do limu too soon. You know what I mean? Some of you have a limu arm out here, and this is like the limu was already dead on arrival, okay? You don't want dead limu and then dead limu. This is like rotten limu, okay? So make sure that your hand is straight out to the side, no dead limu. It's still fresh. Fresh smell of the ocean. Not like this. Like this. No, not like this. Like this. <laughs> all right. Um, let's try just the second verse one more time, and then we're going to go all the way back. Great job, everybody. Oh, sorry. Bye, Bringing with it that fresh smell. Of the what? Leave for. Okay, don't forget to lock in the hand. Let's go all the way from the beginning. You got this. First verse, two times. Second verse, one time. Don't forget there's a spin right at the beginning, too. Hula. Hey, aloha. Spin. Waikiki. My darlings, that was verses one and two. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. I'm gonna just take a look. Did you see any questions? No? Yay. Hey, thank you so much for appreciating Eames questions. He's full of them, but he had some really good ones today. Nice job. I'm so lucky to have built in um slave labor, I mean student helper. Student teacher. No, no. no. <laughs> All right. Um, I think just to end up today, let's dance it one more time. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments. Or if you like something that we did today and you'd like more of it, always let us know. This is Waikiki Hula in honor of Hualeilani, the home of Prince Jonah Kuhio, Kalakano Ole, and Princess Kahanu at Waikiki.
I think we better quit while we're still fresh. <laughs> uh, I think this limu has a little bit of an intoxication for us, but <laughs> oh, you're so cute. I'm so glad that you folks have enjoyed this hula. Um, it's a fun one, and all of the feedback is always so appreciated. Even the mad faces that you press by accident, that's no problem. We don't mind. <laughs> all right. Um, so next week, we will be continuing on with Waikiki Hula, continuing to honor our Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniano Ole. It's almost time for his big day, Kuhio Day, on March 26th. So I hope that you will continue to join us. I have been uh, just loving learning more about Prince Jonah. And there's actually a series of talks that happen every Friday. Um, I think I have a, a flyer for it. But it's being put on by the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. Yesterday's talk, uh, as I mentioned, was by Dr. Kalani Akana, and he shared that photo, which may or may not have been uh, Prince Kuhio. He, he said that very clearly, but I just like to think that it was him. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Kalani Akana gave a talk. Last week's talk is also available by, available by Kumu Manu Boyd, and he actually sang a song entitled Kuole Lani. Um, so definitely check that out. And next week's, we can't wait to tune in, is by Dr. Daviana Daviana. Daviana? Dav Daviana McGregor. Um, and I've just been learning so much. I hope you enjoy learning about our ali'i, especially the ones that are slightly lesser known. Um, but we're enjoying sharing it with all of you. So mahalo nui for being with us. Have a wonderful week in Hawaii and beyond. And we'll see you then. Ahui ho. Aloha.